What's going on guys? It's Quizzy Dog here and in today's video we're going to go over some of the frequently found issues with the Hisense update M0210 and how to get around it and potentially how to fix them entirely. All that and more right after a word from today's video sponsor. If you guys are looking for an affordable Windows 10 key, then you need to do yourselves a favor and check out VIPSCDKey.com. Using the link within the description below, as well as the coupon code GG20, you will have yourselves a brand new Microsoft Windows 10 Pro OEM CD key for as little as $15.82. What are you waiting for? Use that link within the video description and thank you VIP SCD Key for sponsoring today's video. So update M0210 has been out for the better part of about two weeks. It's a staggered rollout. So if you don't have it yet, it should be coming to your area soon. And from what I'm aware of currently, at least it's only available on the North American models of the UHG, U88G, U7G, and U78G. But some frequently found issues with this update would be dull or dim HDR content. There seems to be a couple of issues as well with the active contrast. It's either grayed out or if it's not grayed out, it doesn't seem to be really doing anything. And then there also looks to be a concern with the Hey Google support directly within the Farfield microphone, not so much within the controller or the remote control itself. That seems to be working perfectly fine. So there are a couple of things that you can do to rectify some of these concerns. And the very first thing to try is a full factory reset. Now, this is a little drastic, but if it fixes the issues, then it may yield a fantastic trade-off. And so far they've identified probably about a 50% swing in fixing the issues and about a 50% swing in it doing absolutely nothing. And by the way, when I say they, I mean either the user community on AVS forums through the comments through these videos, which by the way, thank you to you guys for pooling all of this information for me, for doing tests, for testing yourself, and for providing this feedback without you guys in this community. I wouldn't be able to make these update videos, so be sure as well as a small segue, when you're watching this video, jump into the comment section below and leave your personal feedback and make sure to interact with everybody else as well because there's a lot of great tips and tricks for settings and different things with the comments. So please take a look at that. But again, step one, full factory reset that looks to be fixing some of the issues. Now, if you only have the issue with dull HDR content, specifically on an Xbox Series X, you can actually go within the video output settings of the console itself and switch the video bitrate to 12 bit. Apparently doing so does revitalize and bring back all of that saturation that you're looking for within the HDR if you're experiencing the dull HDR glitch. I don't know why this works. I don't know why it's happening, but it seems to be a viable solution. So if it's only the HDR concerns, try that. It's less drastic. You're not going to factory reset and everything should be okay. Now, the very last thing that you can do that seems to be yielding fantastic results is actually contacting Hisense directly, whether it be their social media team or their technical support team, and actually asking for the M0210 update file. By obtaining the file and the instructions on how to load it onto a USB drive and manually actually update or apply that to the TV, it seems to be fixing all of these concerns if you're experiencing all of them with a very high success rate. Now, I do want to kind of give you a forewarning and a little bit of preface to this step. There could also be negative side effects. I have been warned that potentially if you don't know what you're doing, you could brick your panel. I reached out to Hisense directly. They told me they're seeing success with this step. The other user comments that I've seen within some of my other productions, they've done similar things and they've seen similar positive results. But when I asked if I personally could host this file and the instructions on how to perform this step, they advised against it because in turn, it may be causing negative side effects to the TV with potentially bricking it. So. Do this step at your own discretion. Do this step if you have 
the knowledge or have a knowledgeable person to assist you. I've done this in the past, whether it be rolling up to betas or rolling down to publics. I personally don't feel that it's too hard, but your mileage, of course, may vary. Now, if at the end of the day, you have no faith in the MO210 update and you do want to roll back your TV to the previous software where everything was working aside from the 4K 120 hertz, the old software, as you know, had that vertical resolution issue where it was displaying either 3840 over 1440 or over 1080, and it was actually causing a lot of softness within the video feed itself. If you choose to roll back, the rollback has to be done manually. So again, you have to get this file from either the Hisense social team or the Hisense technical support team. When you roll back, the TV will automatically try to do the latest update again. So the only real way around this, there's two ways to do it. One is quite severe, one is fairly mild, but I don't know how long it will actually last for is when you roll back, you can either choose not to put Wi-Fi on this TV, which effectively, of course, is going to kill the smart TV features. For somebody like myself, it's not a big deal because I use an external player. I have an Apple TV 4K, so I don't use anything to do with the smart features on this TV. I find external devices just work better. They tend to age better, and they tend to have more support. Uh, but if you're using the smart TV features and you need the Wi-Fi, apparently another thing that you can do is when the TV is going through the auto update, which happens pretty quickly after rolling back the software, you can actually choose to update in background. And as long as you're quick enough, you can then go within your settings, you can turn off the Wi-Fi, power cycle the TV, and then turn the TV back on. And what this is doing is this is essentially tricking the update server into assuming that you've already downloaded the whole update file and you've already applied it. That way you can use your Wi-Fi after that again and it shouldn't have any issues. This was something that R&D let me know personally to share with you guys as a viable potential solution. They've tested it, they've tested it with success but how long that success will last and how long it'll trick the update servers for is something that I don't know personally. So again, I guess in conclusion, the issues that we're experiencing, although the update does fix a large variety of issues, it's since introduced a couple with the uh, Google Assistant support, specifically with the Firefield microphone. I turn mine off so it's not a main concern. Uh, with Doll HDR, uh, specifically found on the Xbox Series X is what I'm hearing through the comments. And then also uh, the issues uh, that we talked about previously as well with the active contrast. So long and short, if it's just the HDR and it's just a Series X, go ahead, set your HDR to 12-bit. That should revitalize, resaturate, and bring that HDR back to life. If you're having those active contrast concerns and you're the type of person that likes active contrast or you're having issues with the Google Assistant and you like having the Google Assistant with the Firefield microphone, it appears as of right now, if a factory reset doesn't fix it, which is said to be about a 50% success rate, you will have to get that update file from Hisense, update manually. And it seems like maybe there's concerns with going from the previous update and how it's loading itself over top of that to get to MO210. My assumption, because I know a lot of people are gonna say, why the heck didn't Hisense test this? They more than likely did, but they more than likely did a lot of these tests forcing the update on the panel and not going back to the public release and doing an OTA update like the end consumer is. So I hope this helps some of you guys out. The last video about the update has been performing well. We have a lot of fantastic comments from you guys, the community, both giving your issues, giving your feedback, giving your success stories, and giving your own troubleshooting steps. So this is just a culmination of both your feedback as well as what I've obtained by reaching out to Hisense directly to hopefully steer you guys in one of three directions to get this up and running the way that it should be based on what you might be experiencing. So if you found this video at all helpful, go ahead and please leave a like. Also share this comment, not only just on social, but if you find that you're frequenting forums like AVS forums, if there's different subreddits that you're on and you feel this stuff is useful and you feel like 
like this stuff has helped you, it may help a broader community as well. And I don't tend to share these myself just because I don't like self-promoting. So if you feel that I've done justice by the community and helping you guys out and you've had personal success with some of this stuff that I've advised you of, then go ahead and give this a share. It would truly mean a lot. And I think it would mean a lot to the Hisense community as a whole that may be experiencing these concerns. But with that being said, until my next video, guys, my name is Crazy Dog. You guys have been awesome. And we'll catch you all in my next one. Take care.